Hey guys, it's Carol and thank you for stopping by. This is a Floss Tube Extra. It is my 2022 end of year whip parade and I figured I have never shown all of my whips in one video before. So I thought I would do that today. It's 20 cross stitch projects and one needle point. And I wanted to sit down and start working on plans for 2023. And I realized that I need to kind of have an idea where I am right now. So that's kind of the impetus for this. And also I just thought it'd be kind of nice to share everything that I have. I do put all of my projects into group ins and some of them are like super obvious, like all my Mirabilias, cause I have five of them going. That's one group. Samplers, kind of obvious. Um, miscellaneous is like everything that I just don't know where it belongs. So the groups are not quite of equal size, but as I go through, I'm just gonna have everything together. So I have Mirabilias, samplers, full coverage, my smalls, which is also my smallest category, thankfully, and then my miscellaneous, which is my biggest category. <laughs> so I want to go ahead and get started with my Mirabilias. The first Mirabilia we're going to be starting with is Autumn Queen, and you have if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you've seen this one a fair amount. Um, I just want to give some backstory. I found Mirabilia's back in 2002 on an old cross-stitch bulletin board forum, whatever. It was the wild west of the internet. And I had no, I had never really gone to a needle workshop. Like an LNS meant nothing to me. I bought my materials at Michael's. So if Michael's didn't have it, I didn't stitch it. But I saw these online and absolutely had to get them. Now, actually, as another note, in 2002, you could buy this and Spring Clean at Michael's. You couldn't get all the mill hills you needed to finish them, but you could get the patterns. I remember seeing it. Um, I actually had a friend who, for like a hot second, decided that he wanted to do some cross stitching and he actually picked this one up. I don't know if he ever did it or finished it, but you know, if he's out there, I hope he is. Um, Anyway, so I did mail order these instead, and for a broke college student in 2002, buying all four of the seasonal queens felt like a really big commitment. Now, that big commitment, I didn't expect to take 20 years, but, well, 20 plus years, because I'm not done yet. But I have done uh, Spring Queen and Autumn Queen, they just need to be framed and I'll show them to you when they're fully finished one day. But in the meantime, here's where Autumn Queen is. And here is Autumn Queen. A really, really beautiful piece. And I'm kind of hoping to get her done in 2023. As a side note, I was planning on telling me and I do start dates for all of these. And I'm hoping that I remember this, but um, Autumn Queen, I have two start dates for it and I'm not sure which one is correct. It's either September 9th, 2019, or it's sometime mid-March 2020, and I don't remember. And again, I wrote down two different dates, so that's not particularly helpful. My, my next Mirabilia is the Stargazer, which I started on March 2nd, 2022, is my first project from last year's Mirabilia March. So this piece, I am not hugely into, despite the fact, I mean, it, she looks more complete than she really is. There's a ton of beading up in the upper part here that I have, n I always say beading to the end. And there's a lot of skirt down here, but this one is almost my most fun of the Mirabilly whips to pull out. And I suspect it has to do with the fact that she has a face. Uh, my other Mirabilias do not yet have finished faces and in the past, I've always done their faces first. I, these last few, I've been kind of experimenting and I'm realizing there, I like to start in the center, but it really is helpful to have a person and not just random bit of clothing. So this one is done on 28 count casual linen in raw natural. I am, I love, love the look of natural linen. Um, so it's not my only project on it, but I find myself drawn to this every time that I am fabric shopping. So this isn't my, this will not be my last project on this kind of fabric. Um, I don't normally do 28 count for no particular reason. I don't have a favorite count that I like to work on. Um, I tend to go with whatever the pattern tells me. So most Mirabilia's tell you to do it on 32 count. 
Um, this one says to do it on 28 count, I presume because of some of the size of the beads involved, but I really like it. My next Mirabilia is the last of my Seasonal Queens, Winter Queen, and no, I don't consider Royal Holiday part of the Seasonal Queens series. She's very similar too, but winter, summer, spring, autumn, like the original four, kind of just let them be. Um, I started this one also in March, uh, March 13th, 2022 specifically, and I'm doing it on a 32 count white Belfast linen. Uh, I will note that it's pretty much the um, called for fabric. I am not particularly, I don't deviate too far when it comes to things like the Mirabilia's. And I had, start, when I started this back in 2002 with my very first one, Spring Queen, I totally did it on the called for. So I have all of them matching. I then made kind of a beginning of a start. She at least has the beginning of her head. Um, haven't spent a lot of time on her recently, but I do love the colors. I love the satin effect of this dress. It is just an absolutely gorgeous project. My next Mirabilia is Royal Holiday, which is also a Christmas queen, but again, I don't consider her part of the Seasonal Queen series, but she is very reminiscent of, I do love how she looks. I am doing her on a 32 count Belfast linen in light mocha i didn't i think the problem most of these are called for witch old i prefer swigart so i tend to go with whatever looks close enough that i will like and looking at this one particularly with all of the white trim i knew that it would look better on a darker fabric than doing the white and here's royal holiday i love how the reds here pop against the fabric it is just, this one's a really gorgeous piece. Again, the satin is just, I love textiles. I love textiles with a lot of visual interest. So one of the cool things about a satin weave is just how it catches the light. I really think that Nora Corbett does a fantastic job of capturing that in her art, and I love stitching it. My last in progress Mirabilia is Lady of the Mist. I started her at the very end of the month when I was doing my Mirabilia only stitching in March, so March 28th, 2022. I have not made it very far in her, so of all of my whips, and particularly, I guess, 2022 new starts, this one is the one that maybe disappoints me the most just because I have not put the time in to get where I think I thought I would be when I started it. Not kidding, there's not a lot going on here. It's like the very beginning of her, it's like her lap and not much else. You can't tell anything. It's like four colors. I mean, they're really pretty, but I just have not prioritized this one at all. Um, so like I said, it's kind of the most disappointing of the new starts just because I got like here and said, um, okay, good enough for now. Um, she is on a 32 count Belfast linen, raw natural again, and maybe, maybe 2023 we'll see we'll work on her. So now we move into my samplers group and I will point out that I probably have some in my miscellaneous that we could call samplers but that for whatever reason I've just kind of chosen not to. These are the ones that to me scream sampler and I'm going to start with Heartstring Samplery's Coffee Quaker. I started this one also back in, I didn't write a date down for this one so it's kind of March 2020. Uh, I expected it to be a fast project. Two and a half years later, not done. That's okay. Coffee Quaker is being stitched on a 40 count linen um, from Arna Reproductions. The colorway is Beach Brew, and I am using the called for flosses with the exception of Ruby Slipper and Grasshopper because I just didn't like them. I wanted more browns, no green, no red. So I substituted in instead Mocha and Havana. Um, mocha, a little less great of a like eh, it's okay Havana has turned out fantastically sampler that's been seeing a fair amount of work from me this year has been the fruit of plenty from modern folk embroidery this is one I started April 9th 2022 um you're gonna note there is a lot of 2022 starts in here I was just feel every time I got serotitis I was going with it this one I have really been sticking with so that's a good thing. I am doing this on a white 40 count vertical even weave. This is the first time I've used this particular even weave. 
Um, I actually chose it not because I have any particular affinity for 40 count, but mostly because the entire project fits on a fat quarter with a good margin, like this is right at just under three inches. The top is a little more than three inches, so plenty of room for putting a proper mat on it. Um, I The darker color is 3808, the lighter color is 3810. I think they look fantastic together, and I really, really love this project. I'm also going to point out, I love all my projects, some of them more so than others, but this one is one that I really, really enjoy pulling out. Because I, I guess getting back to starteritis, I also decided that 2022 was going to be the year I started this, which is Modern Folk Embroidery's a Family Patchwork Sampler. This is, I actually, I think I bought this in like February 2020, so yeah, but pre-COVID crazy to think of. Um, and then I just never, and I obviously bought the card copies from my LNS, so I didn't have any way to, I didn't have any fabric for it at the time, so I never started it, so I decided that 2022 was going to be the year for it. So this one I started on April 16th, 2022. Yeah, I have the fabric folded over. It actually, I mean, it goes out like that, but... This is one of my few pieces that's on a landscape orientation, so it's different uh, for showing. This is using DMC 924 as my color. I am using, again, a 40 count vertical even weave. I actually bought it as a fat half and cut it in half so I could get both pieces on, um, but that's, that's what drove the size of it. I stitching one over two. I think it looks fantastic. And I just haven't prioritized this one as much. Um, the more I'm done with it, like when I start filling in here where it gets denser, I really like it where it can be a little, with the open areas are not my favorite piece, I guess. When I'm doing samplers, I do like a lot of stuff, like the busier the better. Oh, well, there you go. Um, and the last of my samplers is Consider the Lilies by Heartstring Samplery. This was my birthday start for this year. Um, I'm just realizing how many of these are literally started this year. I know this, I've already said that, but wow, when I'm sitting here and actually saying Tate's, it is really amazing. Um, I decided that I did need, I had seen this one on Beth Twist Instagram two years ago. It is fully done up. It is a just absolutely magnificent piece. So made for a great start. I can't back up far enough to show you the entire piece. Like, I mean, I could, but just today I'm not going to because I haven't filled it in. But, um, and so I usually, I've just been showing it like this, doing progress pics. This is on 28 counts linen. It's also on our pre reproductions. It's winter brew. I used exactly what was done for the model. Um, it's, like I said, this piece is huge. Like this, see, it's, that's just the, height it's longer than it is wide i am so I, this will be so cool when it's done and i do like again this one at least has like a lot of motifs all kind of notes to each other so it has that level of busyness that i do enjoy um i just haven't gotten very far with it because i went from having at the beginning of 2022 i had i think five whips in total so yeah good life choices on my part <laughs> My next grouping are my full coverage pieces, and fortunately, I have not gone as crazy with full coverage as sometimes I feel tempted to when I see other people's works. But here is my first one. It is Heaven and Earth Designs Winter Kiss. The artist is Adele Sessler, and I bought this in 2016 and started it January 1, 2017. Um, at the time, I actually thought I was gonna manage to do one of the challenges in the Hade Facebook group. Um, never did happen, and I'm no longer on, like, active on Facebook, but that's okay. Um, this is my, my fabric all the way back. It's pretty wide as well. Um, this is a 25 count I 
believe it's ivory, but I have lost the tag or to tell you what it is. Um, so here's my giant piece of fabric. This is just the width, it's half the height. Sorry, trying to not clobber. Um, so you can see what I'm actually working on. This is page one, page two, and I've started page three. Um, this is 49 pages. I am almost positive I will never get it done. Um, just because I, again, don't prioritize. I started this one in 2017. I got my first two page finishes last winter and I am hoping that some of the subsequent pages won't take as long. Um, I do, it's whenever one on the 25 counts. There's a lot of black that's gonna be further down. So I don't know how well the fill is gonna be, like if you'll see the background color through it or not. I don't know, this is my very first full coverage piece and it actually put me off of wanting to try other full coverages for a while. I don't particularly enjoy grading. Um, I do, obviously you'll see that uh, full coverages are the only things that I grid. Um, the confetti stitching gets unfun sometimes, but then you step back and then you look and go, but that's really cool. So this is the, was my one and only full coverage for the longest time. I was buying, I was at my LNS buying the supplies for Consider the Lilies when I saw this one. And one of the things that I really like about it is that its stitch count was much smaller than Winter Kiss, which I like, don't know if I'll ever finish. So, and I, when I start projects, I really do intend to finish them. I don't want to work on something that will just never be done. So when I saw this one, this sit, the stitch count actually was a little encouraging to me, so I decided that I would give a try to full coverage again. Um, and in this case, having the nice like booklet is also helpful. And uh, this is the only project I'm parking on. I don't love having all of this like, this feels messy to me. When I'm actually stitching, these are all really helpful, but for storage points, I just, I don't know that I love it. Um, also, sometimes I'm worried that I have not 100% sure if I have the right color. Like I park them always in the lower left of, so whatever stitch, like I can only go from lower left to upper right. That's like my, what I try to do. I, I don't know. Uh, this one I also didn't want to grid. So hence why I'm doing the parking instead. And I'm doing it from the upper right corner and just kind of doing a diagonal down. It's, this one's really cute. I also, want to say that's something I have to give some credit to. And this one, um, I know it says custom crafts. Um, the designer is actually Tarina Clark. So it was charted by um, the people behind Artisy. And all of this is only 40 colors, which is so cool to me because I don't necessarily want to do like five blues that all almost the same color <laughs> confetti wise like if you're gonna do like this is really like i don't know it's very i guess in my mind this is more thoughtfully done than say some other full coverages can be including the one i'm gonna show you next uh i did this is on an 18 count two over one just white ada because I'm not going to see the fabric, so I figured why not make it easy on my eyeballs. Um, I also just like the size of it. Uh, I think for this particular size, uh, and it is 292 wide and 222 tall, is that in 18 count, like I said, the entire piece is that size, which isn't so bad. Like I said, in my mind, totally doable. Not going to be done anytime soon, but it's doable. With Autumn Chapel going as well as it did, and I don't remember if I actually told you that this, this chart, this is Autumn Chapel. Yeah. I know, go me. Um, it was going so well. Well, my sister decided that she wanted to do another full coverage and she told me about the mini interior of Tintern Abbey. I absolutely had to say yes. So this one is being done as a stitch along with my sister. Um, you will note it is about the same size as Autumn Chapel. So the minis for Hades do come across as doable 
as opposed to, you know, 49 pages, this one is like 16. So this is um, the beginning of page one of Mini Interior of Tintern Abbey. I said I'm doing this as a stitch along with my sister. So this one is probably, of all my full coverages, is probably gonna get done first just because I kind of have incentive to want to keep going with it. It is also on an 18 count two over one because it's roughly the same size as Autumn Chapel. And I have been, I really do, I have to say the coverage that the two over one gives you is really phenomenal. And for the, um, minis from Hade, it works out to about 12 inches across and then it was I think 17 inches down so I thought that was like a perfect put on the wall kind of size hence why I chose to go with the 18 count um, also as you can see gridding I really really don't love gridding fabric but it is helpful because I am able to do a little bit of cross country. I mean, I don't go crazy with my cross country, but it's allowing me to do a little bit. So I guess that's the, just have to accept if I'm gonna do full coverage, I need to grid. It's better for me. So my next group, this one's my small group and it's a small group. That was a terrible pun. There's only two of these. And for me, smalls are, I don't do a lot of smalls. Most of my projects tend to be, I'll call medium to large but not extra large. That probably like makes sense. I, I guess like for me in like a normal project, 200 by 200 is what I consider just, that's what you work on. So really anything that's smaller than about, we'll say 150 by 150 to my mind looks small. I think that's a good way to put it. So I'm gonna share with you my first one, which I had started. So the first of my smalls is Design Works, what's it called? Start Doing. I always forget the name of this. I always think of it as Stop Dreaming because that's, that's a, whatever. Anyway, I bought this one as a kit back in April and I started it on April 13th and it's not very far, like at all. Um, it is on a 14 count navy blue Ada and one of my problems is I lost the floss. This blue floss right here, I don't, I have all the rest of the floss from the kit, but I do not know where the blue walked off to. So I just kind of put this down and have left it. Um, the chart does have, the colors listed in the chart are very clearly meant to be DMC. So I bought the blue that was called, it's not quite the same. So I have to go frog out all of this blue and start again. So. This one's been kind of on hiatus, but it is not a large project. As you can see, there's no reason I couldn't knock this out in a couple weeks if I really wanted to. I just haven't prioritized. And that's, but this is what I mean by a small in my world. My other small is my Sunday Stitches Be Thou My Vision by Heartstring Samplery. And let's see, things that I don't have to put on a backing board to hold up because they're small enough to stay on their own. Like this one's really not huge either. It's I think like, is it on here? No, it's not. Um, it's like 80 stitches tall, like 75 stitches wide. It's really not huge. Um, I'm doing this on a 40 count linen Star Hollows blend by Arna Reproductions. Um, it's just, it, again, it's cute, it's small. They're not meant to be intense projects. I started this one October 27th, 2022. My last group is my miscellaneous group and it includes kind of the, it's like the catch-all. And of course, I mean, I didn't want to call it the catch-all. Miscellaneous is what you call these things, but some of them probably could have gone in like the samplers group. I just chose not to, um, but they kind of, they don't have a necessarily like a cool categorization with everything else, but you know, I have a lot of cool things in here. I'm gonna start first with Fall Carousel Horse by Teresa Wensler. This is the beginning of a carousel horse. This is the saddle. There's some mane, lots and lots of detail. Um, stylistically, this project, there, I don't have any others that are currently close to this with the amount of backstitching for the details, but 
it is really neat and I decided to do the full carousel horse just merely because I started it in the autumn but I have the charts for the other four seasons and I am looking forward to doing all of them I have uh, I cut had a full yard of the 32 count antique white uh, Belfast linen to do all of these on I was very excited. I finally found the card for tapestry. I knew it was around my house somewhere. It ended up on the underside of a box. Don't ask me how. Found it cleaning up this week, which meant that it wants me to show it off. Um, this is from Ink Circles, and it is my only uh, mandala design. I, I have seen, not this particular one stitched up, but I see them stitched up. I, my old LNS had a couple of mandalas on the wall and they look really, really cool. And I, I love like I, the picture. I love looking at it. Stitching it up on the other hand is not necessarily <laughs> my cup of tea. So that's one of those things that I guess the thing to learn before I had started investing in buying a whole bunch of patterns that happen to be mandalas that I didn't do that and I'm really thankful for it so this is about how far I've gotten I had started in the upper left corner and then realized that I just really wanted to get to the center so hence why it's this one looks a little like could use some filling in this is on a 30 count light khaki linen from Weeks Dye Works um, but it's pretty I guess I expected the background fabric to show through, but once you really start stitching it, this is a very dense design. You don't see a lot of the background fabric at all. From Modern Folk Embroidery, I have Ave Maria, the Annunciation. And this one, I mean, I wouldn't call it a sampler, but it's my only religious themed piece. I started this on March 25th, 2022, um, with the intent of getting it done by Christmas. I had a lot of intent. Not necessarily a lot of follow through. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll go with that. Come on. So this is using DMC 311 on, I believe this is 36 count white Belfast linen. Um, not a lot to say about it. I I guess underestimated how long it would take to actually stitch up. This is, I'll call medium sized piece. This is closer, like it's not really a small, but it's definitely not as big as a lot of what I start. Um, but it is in fact, like I said, quite pretty. I'm doing it two over two. I probably could have gone one over one, to be honest. Um, it's very full from here but I think you can still see enough of where the white of the fabric pokes through to provide the look. So I mean, this is a monochromatic piece. I, everything will be in the 311. In May of 2020, I'd started this, which is Dreaming of Tulips by Rosewood Manor. Tulips are my favorite flowers, like all time. They're the best. And they last such a, like short amount of time they they truly they're there one day gone the next but when they're there they're so beautiful I unfortunately don't live in a place that grow like even if I plant tulips they don't grow worth a hoot so I don't bother anymore but this was kind of my concession to it in like I said the spring of 2020 and then I kind of put it down and left it for a while this is what I have of it. Um, the center is roughly somewhere over here. So I've pretty much only done the upper right quadrant. Um, you will see, I did not, I did not leave myself a lot of margin for this, like really a very tight two inches. I don't know if my thought was that I was not gonna put any mats anywhere near this. I'm not really sure what I was thinking when I picked this size fabric, so live and learn. If, definitely gotten better about the I will use a full three inches but this is using a DMC substitution for the greens and then using the actual um, over dyes for all of the pinks and dark reds and this is a 32 count white Belfast I figured 
you'll note I don't necessarily pick a lot of very exciting background fabric because in this case I just wanted all the like the cool colors to pop. And for something like this where you have a fair amount of like yellows, I worry about if I pick something much darker, how well will they pop against the fabric? Um, at the beginning of the summer, June 5th, 2022, I started this kit, which is from Basilla. This is a vintage one from 1994. And you can, by the way, readily find this on eBay, like all over the place. It's not really all that expensive. I think I paid $12 plus shipping for mine. Um, it is a really, really cute design. Um, and it's the first project I did on Ada in years. So I'm really glad that I had gone with this just because it allowed me to say, hey, I don't have to do everything on linen. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with the kit fabric. So this is where it is. This is an incredibly stiff Ada, much stiffer than the um, stuff that my full coverages are on. Those are the Artiste by Zweigart at Hobby Lobby. They're much softer. This is some vintage thing that was sitting in a plastic bag since 1994. I don't know who did it. Like, I assume that they, if I knew how to read the silver here and the salvage, I'd be like, oh, okay, I know who did it. I have no idea, but it is very stiff, but it works out fantastically using um, my set of Q-snaps that I picked up, which I don't love doing them on linen, but the Q-snaps work great with the Ada, so. Super cute. Hopefully to get further on this one over the next year. <laughs> the last of my miscellaneous, and this one is one that I'm pretty sure I caught, probably could have called a sampler, but <sighs> this one's one of my more frustrating projects. So it got dumped in miscellaneous because I'm punishing it. Yeah, okay. This is Summertime Coverlet from Heartstring Samplery. And I picked this up back in 2018. I was at my LNS and they had a bunch of Quakers on the wall and I had never seen samplers that were monochromatic. Like this was, I guess I was used to samplers being either reproductions or very primitive looking with, honestly, I find not that great of color selections. Um, and then I, like Quakers, but I didn't want to commit, like all the Quakers that they had were really big. So I wanted to try something that was monochromatic. So I ended up picking this one out and it is really, and it's really cute. The pattern itself is actually charted from the bottom up to here. This, it, this motif just gets doubled to give it the size. And I didn't buy enough of the floss for it. And it's use, uh, Gentle Arts uh, Uniform Blue, which, is never in stock anywhere and everybody like there is you either get it I've now bought like three different sets of it it sometimes comes come very very blue sometimes it's very gray and I'm like <sighs> so that's why this one's a little frustrating um I started it back in 2018 and it's still not done I mean and the thing is it's so cute I look at the picture and I love it but I don't love stitching on it. Probably doesn't help. I'm still working on like these endless piles of flowers and I am just over them. So this is the center is, uh, I'm gonna, where did I start this one? Is right about here. Um, this is the top. So finish up the top and then I'll continue down. Um, the other thing is that I had managed to spill Sprite on this. So there is a little bit of where the like colors ran. So I'm gonna have to like wash this for reals. And when I get done and I have to hope that some of where it like did that comes out. The fabric is a 36 count linen from Weeks Dye Works in the colorway called linen. That makes it really hard to find, but I wanna tell you it is a beautiful, beautiful neutral background that it's, It's gray, it's like the perfect grayish because it's not quite, it's not gray, it's not quite, it's so it's warmer than a lot of those. But like I said, it's perfect light grayish. It looks absolutely fantastic with the uniform blue. I just struggle to force myself to work on this one. So, eh, I don't know, at some point. 
You'll note a lot of the ones that don't come out a lot are definitely here in the miscellaneous category. They're there probably for a reason. <laughs> um, that's okay. Now, my last oddball, um, this one is not cross stitch. So all of those were my cross stitch whips, but I just wanted to share that I do occasionally mess with needlepoint. I do not know where the cover picture is for this, but I started this in 2006. I picked it up while I was pregnant with my first child. Um, and I guess I had this vision that I was gonna have time to get any crafting done while being pregnant. I mean, I don't know what I was thinking. But anyway, um, this is from Cooler Design Studio. It is a um, Barbara Batts design and it's geraniums. This is on a 14 count mesh canvas interlock something something. I'm not really smart about any of the needlework stuff. Um, I know how to do a very basic needlework stitch. Um, I am actually figured out how to properly fill this in with like a basket stitch. My grandmother did a ton of needlework, uh, needle point specifically, but she never taught me how to do it. So I'm kind of figure it out as I go along. Um, one of the things that I do find interesting about these kits is I do not enjoy trying to figure out what all of these are, um, fortunately. So this is an old Bucilla kit. Um, it's really sad, by the way, that Bucilla just doesn't make these. I mean, I bought this at like AC Moore, like it wasn't that hard to find. And now you want a needlepoint kit? Good luck, have fun. Um, or spend oodles and oodles and oodles of money. There's some really beautiful ones that you get imported from England, but they're expensive, which given how not good I am at progress on this is why you don't, I will not spend the money to do this. <laughs> Although they are gorgeous and I love some of these, I love botanicals, particularly needlepoint. Um, I have all the stuff, I just, uh, okay, oh, same, Basila has, they basically provide a diagram on the inside, but because of the way that they do it by squares, if you can mentally fill in the squares, you basically have a chart. So I end up doing, I literally do work this as if I'm working off of a chart. Um, and maybe one day, one day I'll get it done. I mean, I hope so anyway. Um, this is so old, by the way, that like at one point, some uh, moths got the corner up here. So I actually have to redo some of the black because the black is all the oldest stuff, but you know, I did, I figured I would share just because I do occasionally pull this out. Um, the other thing is you will note that this is a very simple, it's a split rod from like Joann's, not worth it. They are the, like, this is the worst needlepoint frame ever to work with. Uh, I really need to get one of the ones that you sew in place because you see, there's like the tension on this. It's just, it's so loose and flimsy. And I think that's another thing I don't like about it. Since I did buy the Janlin peonies, I think it was peonies, um, kit, I would like to kind of finish this up just so that I can have the two, the two pieces are meant to be companions to each other. So it would be kind of cool if I could get somewhere with it. Um, maybe, maybe someday soon when I can prioritize. We'll see. Anyway, thank you for stopping by and checking out my whips. I am going to be back next week with my 2023 plans. I am very excited to see what this next year brings me by way of crafting. I hope that you have had a wonderful holiday season and that you have a happy new year. See you next time. Bye.